Welcome to Washington Unplugged. I'm John Dickerson. Democracy is being stolen. That's the charge from the Democratic National Committee in a recent ad attacking pro-Republican groups who are spending millions on the midterm elections. Let's take a look at the ad. It's called Stealing Democracy. Carl Rove, Ed Gillespie, they're Bush cronies. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce, they're shills for big business. And they're stealing our democracy, spending millions from secret donors to elect Republicans to do their bidding in Congress. It appears they've even taken secret foreign money to influence our elections. It's incredible. Republicans benefiting from secret foreign money. Tell the Bush crowd and the Chamber of Commerce, stop stealing our democracy. The Democratic National Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. So is this a hyperbole, sour grapes, or is there something to the charge? I'm joined by National Press Secretary for the Democratic National Committee, Hari Savugan, and Republican strategist, Sherry Jacobus. Hari, I want to start with you. Uh, shills, cronies, this is tough stuff, but there's that little weasel word in there. It appears they're getting foreign money, but there's no actual proof of that, is there? Look, this is what we know. We know that the chamber takes foreign money. We know that they are opposed uh, to candidates who want to end tax breaks or uh, tax loopholes that allow for outsourcing. And we know that they're doing this in secret. All these facts are undisputed. Uh, we also know that while these facts are undisputed, they raise serious questions. Uh, and so, you know, the chamber and anybody else can clear this up uh, by disclosing. What this is really about is disclosure. Uh, the American people deserve to know uh, who is funding these uh, campaigns. Uh, who's, who are they fighting for? Who are these candidates fighting for? The president who kicked off this charge in a speech last week took it out of his speech yesterday, um, suggesting there's some retreat going on in terms of making this charge basically that foreign money is being spent on these ads. Mm -hmm. So everybody's kind of walking away from this charge too. Listen, the facts are the facts. We know what they are. Uh, and those facts taken together raise questions. Uh, and those questions can be easily answered uh, if we have more disclosure. And that's what all of this is about. That's why we supported the Disclose Act, which Republicans unanimously opposed. Uh, the American people deserve to know who their candidates are fighting for. Sherry, what about that point? I mean, why not just say who's given the money? What's what's wrong? I mean, isn't that what we, we want to know who's involved well, in our politics, First right? of all, there, there's a couple of interesting points here. You're right, the president is backing off on this. And uh, I thought one of the best moments in yesterday's Sunday uh, television shows and the Sunday morning news shows uh, was right here on CBS on Face the Nation when Bob Schieffer turned to David Axelrod and said, is this the best you can do? Uh, this has been shot down by the New York Times. Even the Senator Al Franken, uh, who's out there trying to push this, had to admit that there's nothing illegal about this. When you look at the George Soros money from moveon.org uh, that's been poured into uh, the campaigns for Democrats for the past few years. When you look at uh, all of that secret money uh, from donors for the uh, Obama campaign in 2008 when they when they had you know those those that untraceable money from those disposable credit cards. I mean this is over and over and over again. And you have the New York Times saying that what is happening here is no different than what's going on with the unions. But the U.S. Chamber well, has kept on. their the foreign money separate and uh, it's a, the, what they receive from other countries is a, such a small sliver of their overall budget. This is a completely manufactured But let's issue. talk about disclosure, though. Why not? You mentioned George Soros. So you've right. got a name, and you can say pro or con, George Soros, good or bad, but with no name, you, you can't trace it. So why, why, not, why not just disclose the names? Uh, well, as I said, the U.S. Chamber has a $200 million budget. Uh, and the so-called foreign money that they get is about 100000 of their total budget. Uh, uh, if, if this is something that uh, Congress decides to do and they want to pass it and Democrats can make their case, uh, and if they want to go after the so-called special interest money, then you have to look at the unions and you have to look at uh, the secret money that was poured into the Obama campaign. John, let's uh, talk about uh, this, the this, is, this is a really a completely made-up issue, and, and I think that the media uh, is starting to, to, to question that. Well, indeed, we, do. you are one last thing, though. John uh, Boehner, who'd like to be a House Speaker, of yes. course, it talks a lot about about transparency and it's one of the things he's kind of running on mm -hmm. so how on the one hand can you have a person who wants to run the house talk about transparency and then on the other hand benefits so wonderfully from all this money that comes by in an, in a non-transparent way so aside from whether anybody wants to make this a piece of legislation why wouldn't Republicans who are running on transparency not embrace Transparency. Well, I guess, you know, you have to look at also how the Democrats ran on transparency and being the most, eth most ethical Congress and, and all of that sort of thing that we heard Nancy Pelosi talk about. 
it, 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 you have to do it on both sides. And you can't have a president of the United States who raised unprecedented amount of money and spent unprecedented, amount of, unprecedented amounts of money in his campaign with all of that secret money coming in from donors that nobody knew anything about and to this day knows anything about. And then now, because the Democrats are hurting so badly in the polls, try and make this some sort of an October surprise when you have the New York Times basically saying there's nothing here. Uh, so no, you literally have major members of the media who, quite frankly, I don't think Republicans ever expected to kind of mm -hmm. go in this direction, basically telling uh, the DNC and the President and David Axelrod that you guys got nothing. The small donors that you're talking about with Obama were, were small. In this case, we're talking about much larger amounts. But Harry, I want to get your, your thoughts on this union question. Sure. I mean, look, let's dispel a couple of red herrings right off the bat. Unions have to disclose. Uh, any uh, under labor law, there are uh, forces to disclose. And I think that that is a, a, a pushback from the right on this issue uh, that is completely without merit and not based in fact. Uh, and at the same time, during the campaign, uh, of course, the Obama campaign followed federal regulations and everyone over $200 disclosed uh, their contributions. So we know who's giving, uh, but we don't know who's giving uh, to these shadowy groups. And these shadowy groups have an agenda. And we've seen it in the, can the candidates they support and the, and the issues that they support. Uh, and so we should know, you know, who is behind this agenda. And the American people deserve to know that. So, but again, the, the analogy is right to the extent that unions do have an agenda and they're a big force. Your mm -hmm. point, though, is that at least we know who they are. Right. Let me ask you a political question about this, which is you talk to Democratic strategists and they say, why in heaven's name, three weeks from the election, are we talking about this bank shot funding thing when people care about the economy? Mm -hmm. What's the answer to that? It's because uh, this, has, this is central to the economy. This is who these candidates are going to fight for. Are they going to fight for uh, corporate America that's fighting for tax breaks that allow, or tax loopholes that allow uh, American jobs to be shipped overseas? Or are they going to fight for the middle class? Uh, and, you know, Who's cutting those checks to these candidates matters. If it's somebody that uh, is in favor of uh, shipping jobs overseas, the American people deserve it, to know that. What about that? There, this notion of jobs going overseas is, is actually something both parties are using in their ads. Why isn't is the, that potent? The, the, the potent issue with jobs right now is the fact that we have a 10% unemployment problem. Uh, uh, Gallup came out and you know, told us it was 10.1 percent. Uh, that is something that the American people are alarmed about. The U.S. Chamber uh, supports American businesses, and American businesses are the ones who create jobs in this country, not the government. The American people know that. That's why Republicans are doing better in the polls, because Americans want Washington to stop the spending. They want to stop the insanity of the Obama agenda. And what I find interesting about the timing of this ad, and we're talking about why we're talking about this three weeks out in October, this actually has the feel of something that you might pull out of your hat and run the Friday before an election, before the press uh, and your opponents can come out and correct the record uh, and call and call the, the, a major party on their mistakes on this. So we've had, in the past 24 hours, the media coming out and shooting holes in this. You even had, as I said, had Al Franken having to say, this is not illegal. It looks like one of those things that you do uh, uh, when you're very, very desperate and when you don't want the media to have an opportunity to call you on it. It's almost like somebody pushed that play button about three weeks early. At well, the DNC. let me switch quickly, very briefly, to the West Virginia Senate race, which we're about to talk about in, in, at some length. Harry, I want to ask you, what, what's your sense? Where's, where's that race going? This was one that looked like, you know, Democrats thought they had it in their pocket. What do you think is going to happen? I think Governor Manchin's in, in strong position there. Uh, he's very popular throughout the state. He's running a strong campaign, and, and he's showing West Virginians that he's independent-minded, which is uh, exactly, and he's from West Virginia. And uh, now. That's the opposite of what we're seeing from his Republican opponent. Here we have somebody who's completely out of touch with West Virginia, who lives in a mansion in Florida, uh, and then hires actors from Philadelphia to portray what he considers to be stereotypical West Virginians. And I think uh, West Virginians have had enough of that. They want somebody who's going to represent West Virginia, and that's what Governor Manchin's doing. Your thoughts on You know, this? I'm a West Virginia girl. I'm a proud mountaineer, graduate of West Virginia University. I have property in West Virginia right now. I know the campaign manager for John Racy, Jim Dornan. He's an he's a excellent campaign manager. Uh, so I know West Virginia. And John Racy is a West Virginia boy, I can tell you that. Uh, this is a state that's worried about jobs. Uh, this is a state uh, that knows both of these candidates. And I think they would rather keep Manchin in the governor's uh, mansion, so to speak, uh, because they know that when he comes to Washington, if he is elected senator, he will be a rubber stamp for the Obama agenda. West Virginians are pretty smart. Uh, they're not. They're not. Uh, 
the yahoos that maybe people think they are. They're pretty smart. They know what they've got. And that's why John Racy is at least 5% ahead in the polls. And this is no longer a toss-up. This is now a lean Republican for good reason. I so think this is West Virginians are going to want to keep John Racy in his mansion down in Florida. All no right. Way. One who lives in a mansion versus the governor mansion. Thanks very, very much, Harry. Thanks very Thank much. You. We're now going to switch on to a more in-depth conversation about West Virginia. It's a tight Senate race in the state that uh, Democrats thought was going to be theirs but might now fall to the Republicans. It's one the uh, GOP will need if they're going to pick up those 10 seats required to take over the Senate. Our chief political consultant Mark Amender and Charleston Gazette reporter Allison Knesevich are with me. Allison's by Skype and they're going to help me dissect this race, race and what's going on. Mark, let's start with you. Uh, you've just heard from the left and the right the characterizations of this race. What's really happening? What's really happening is you have a governor who is popular with 66 percent of West Virginians who, the moment you put him in the context of a Senate race, plummets 18 points. That says something about the political environment we're in. Um, there is no question that in West Virginia, Joe Manchin's association with President Obama and the Democratic Party and Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid are a drag on, on his popularity in that context. Allison, is that, uh, is that the way you see it? Is this all about the, the toxicity of the current president? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think what you see here is that the Republicans have been very effective at making this race a referendum on President Obama. And we're seeing that not just in the Senate race, but also in House races here. Um, John Racy's slogan from the very beginning has been, I, I won't be a rubber stamp for Barack Obama. Um, and he's continued that message um, in recent weeks as well. We're going to actually see if we can take a look at an ad in which he takes aim at the president's priorities. Let's see if we can run that. I'm Joe Manchin. I approve this ad because I'll always defend West Virginia. As your senator, I'll protect our Second Amendment rights. That's why the NRA endorsed me. I'll take on Washington and this administration to get the federal government off of our backs and out of our pockets. I'll cut federal spending and I'll repeal the bad parts of Obamacare. I sued EPA and I'll take dead aim at the cap and trade bill because it's bad for West Virginia. Uh, Mark, your reaction to that ad? A subtlety <laughs> uh, is not is not in, in in Governor Manchin's wheelhouse, but very very clear what he's trying to do with that ad. He actually does it, I think, fairly effectively, which is one reason why I think he still has a pretty good shot to win. That combined with his his overall popularity, um, you know, he's always been uh, more to the center than Washington Republicans. And the reality is, uh, if he can get this reality out, the reality is. Uh, he, he probably isn't going to be a rubber stamp for the Obama-Pelosi agenda, whatever that is. But in this climate, convincing West Virginians, um, uh, particularly uh, you know older white West Virginians, that that's the case uh, is a real you know is, is real difficult. And that's why, from the very beginning, I'd assumed that this race was going to be as close as it is. Allison, the, the governor's got foliage and weaponry on his side. They're also <laughs> trying to, to uh, go after John Racy. With the, there's this ad running with his wife, who's got a little chihuahua or something in her arm, says she can't even vote in the state. Uh, they're trying right. to push him out of the state. Is that having any purchase at all? Well, I think that the controversy over the Hickey casting call uh, played really well for the Manchin campaign because they've been trying um, to build a narrative that John Racy is an outsider. Um, we've seen that in previous ads. And so this uh, newest attack ad uh, continues that theme and the Hickey casting call fit really well into that. Um, but I think it will be a matter of whether he can use that against Racy enough um, to overturn these Republican accusations that he'll side with Obama. And is Racy doing anything to defend himself on that charge or does he just benefit from uh, continuing to hang President Obama around Manchin's neck? Uh, well, his campaign has um, criticized Manchin for bringing Racy's family into it. They've called uh, that ad uh, a desperate attempt by a desperate politician. Um, and so they've also distanced themselves from the, the Hick ad itself by saying that they had nothing to do with it. It was an NRSD ad. Mark, what's your sense of this this race? I mean, is this the one of the ones that Republicans absolutely have to have if they're going to get that 10? Um, and uh, and do you see any other races anywhere else moving out of that category? Um, oh, they absolutely have to. I mean, they have to win that race. Um, you know, there are uh, about 12 races that Republicans could conceivably win. 
Um, Dina Rossi in, in Washington State has gotten some traction in recent days, but it also looks like Barbara Boxer in California is doing better. Um, uh, both states, Republicans need to win if they want to take over the Senate. Uh, it's, it's hard to see a singular trend in these Senate races, um, how, other than it, it, it really seems as if Republicans are going to pick up at least six or seven seats. I don't, at this point, see, and I don't see them getting to 10, but it's certainly possible. I mean, you're just, you, you see particularly in, in House races across the Midwest, the, fo the floor seems to be dropping out for Democrats. And if that migrates uh, eastward, you'll start to see it in some of these races. Uh, and, you know, the Senate could very well flip due to the, just the, 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 velocity, of, the velocity of the current. Right, just the sheer wave of it. Allison is I had to make up a new word. Oop. It's so big. Velocity. Well, this race has been so surprising, new words don't even surprise us yeah. anymore. Um, Allison, your last thoughts on, on basically the, the final push here in this campaign. Any surprises you're, you're looking for or any things that we're missing uh, over here in Washington? Uh, well, Bill Clinton is here today in Morgantown to campaign for uh, for Governor Manchin, and uh, Bill Clinton has been very popular in West Virginia. But the Racy campaign is already um, trying to use it to remind voters that Manchin did end up endorsing uh, Obama in the 2008 election, um, and they're they're using this as a, another uh, accusation that that Manchin's a flip-flop or trying to mislead uh, West Virginians into uh, thinking he backed Hillary Clinton, who won here. All right, excellent. Thanks so much for joining us, both of you. And thanks all thanks. of you for watching Washington Unplugged. Join us again tomorrow right here on CBSNews.com. I'm John Dickerson. Have a great day.